Hello, everyone. My guest today is John Nardone. He's the CEO of a company called Flash Talking, a first generation ad tech pioneer. Nardone served as founding board member of the Internet Advertising Bureau. And throughout his career, he's earned recognition within the advertising community for his groundbreaking work at Pepsi, Modern Media and Marketing Management Analytics, culminating in his receiving the Ad Tech Industry Achievement Award in 2012. John, are you ready to take us to the top? Sure. All right. Your space is changing rapidly. It must be fun. Tell us about Flash Talking. What do you do and how do you make money? So uh, Flash Talking is a uh, technology platform that delivers personalized ads on behalf of major advertisers so that the ad that you see is different than the ad that I see based on a whole raft of potential data signals. Medium specific or across many medium? Um, uh, It's all digital, but that's digital video, native ads, desktop, mobile, um, OTT, but all, all forms of digital ads. Many people in this space, the old model is percentage of spend. Then people didn't like the the ad tax in the middle. So they're going, yeah, maybe we can do like a SaaS play on the back end. Where's your revenue model? So it's a CPM model. Um, so it's based on the number of impressions delivered and the complexity of the data and the personalization that's being deployed. Tell me what that, can you give me a real example there? What's that mean? Um, so a, a simple personalization would be based on the weather. So people are going to see one ad when it's raining versus a different ad when it's sunny and over 80 degrees. But that could also uh, be a very, very complex set of rules that would say um, if you've been to the website, show the last three items in order that the person saw. saw. If you haven't been to the website, show the items that are – most popular for people in your geography, unless it's raining, then only show items from the outdoor catalog, except if, and you go on and on, and as you deploy more and more complexity in the rules, the cost per thousand ads delivery goes up. And and walk me through kind of generally speaking, you know, I mean, are you looking at a SaaS play at all? Are you seeing any erosion in your CPM model, that revenue stream or no? No, um, uh, CPMs have been strong um, over the years. In fact, Um, I would say they've gone up as clients are becoming more and more comfortable developing advertising in a dynamic framework and are becoming more and more ambitious about the kind of personalization that they want to do. Yep. And and in terms of who you're serving, are these kind of long tail SMB folks or are you really in the enterprise? Um, No, it's enterprise. We work really at the top of the, uh, um, the largest advertisers in retail, travel, telecommunication, CPG, and auto. Okay. And give me a general sense of size. I mean, and how do you measure that? Is the metric you care about kind of, you know, gr- you know, gross through your platform? What do you measure? Uh, so, so we look at the, uh, the number of impressions delivered uh, most, and then format is important, obviously, because video ads are a lot more expensive and a lot more profitable to deliver than, than standard ads. And so okay. Forth. And when did you launch the company? Uh, so the company's been around since 2001. It's an English company, um, really a, a, a classic entrepreneur story. The founder started the business in his bedroom um, with no outside money. There's never been any venture capital in flash talking. Even today? Uh, even today, yeah. So the company has grown without outside financing. Um, in 2013, TA Associates took a stake in the company, um, but it was all secondary. Um, in other words, it was all, all went to the founders for their stake. Um, the company's been financially self-sufficient really since 2004. Does that mean you've been profitable since 2004? Yes, it does. When did you join? Uh, I joined the CEO three years ago uh, after selling Rocket Fuel, uh, selling uh, my last company, X Plus One, to Rocket Fuel. Um, did the obligatory turnover and then jumped into Flash Talking immediately after. And why? Were you pursuing them? Did they pursue, pursue you? And why choose to do this first, go and launch something else? Yeah, so so they pursued me. Um, Flash Talking was a partner of of X Plus One's. Um, you know, X Plus One was one of the first DMP platforms, and so we had formed, forged a partnership with uh, Flash Talking to so that our data could be pushed into Flash Talking from the DMP and to drive personalized ads. It was a natural kind of partnership. Um, I was interested because you know an ad tech company that was profitable is sort of a an unusual. Uh, animal. You don't run across them very often. But also, um, you know, for the last, uh, you know, 12 years of my career, I was really deep in the analytics. Um, and X plus one was certainly, uh, you know, analytically driven. Um, and, I, and I realized I missed the creative part of the business of my early days as a client and at, at the agency. And Flash Talking presented a unique opportunity to be data driven and analytics driven, but in the creative context, which really nobody had focused on. Uh, 
and and it's proven to be a big opportunity is now um, it clients are really getting around to figuring out I've built my DMPs I've fixed my supply chain for ad buying I've got my DSP strategies done now how do I apply all this data to my creative product and and I'm curious kind of where you've scaled to since you've joined the company so in 2018 this year you know how much ad spend do you think you'll process through your platform Oh my goodness! Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, we're we're going to do somewhere close to seventy million in revenue, and you figure that the the uh, the the ad spend is you know ninety percent, or the 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 ad serving is only you know less than ten percent of the total ad spend. So um, hold on, hold on. I, I, educate me there. I'm not following that. So seventy million in revenue. What then comes out of that in terms of costs? Uh, no, no, nothing. Nothing comes out of that. Um, so, uh, let, let me let me spin it back the other. The question you asked was how much ad spend goes through the platform. Yep. And I'm trying to reverse engineer the number. So, of every dollar that the client spends, ninety percent of that is going to go to the 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 media, and maybe ten percent or less is going to go to the uh, ad serving. So, if which is you, done, right? which is us. So if we do 70 million in revenue, that probably means it's 700 million in total spend that's flowing through the platform. Yep. Got it. So how do you like, do you compete with the bill wise at media ocean and that kind of space or no different, different spaces? No different spaces. In fact, we partner uh, Prisma, um, which is part of media ocean is an important partner. Uh, so when, when, if, if an agency is using Prisma as part of their sort of media planning infrastructure, they'll push those placements into flash talkings infrastructure so that the ads can be served. And where's the company today in terms of, of team size? And I'm curious kind of how much, you know, the breakdown between engineering versus, you know, inside sales, things like that. So we don't have an inside sales um, function. They're all ex- external sales or account management um, who are serving the clients that are in the house. Um, about 70 um, in uh, engineering and product development uh, globally, uh, probably 35 or 40 in sales. Um, and client and direct client support. And then we have a large technical support organization that is neither engineering nor uh, client serve, you know, direct clients. They're doing technical troubleshooting um, and supporting uh, the, the actual products in market. And how many there? Uh, maybe 25. Okay. So about 130, you know, 135 people total. No, 320 people total. 320. Okay. The numbers you just gave me, I added up to that. So there's, there's more, there's more people here that I'm not, where are they? Yeah. Well, well, so, so you've, you've got, uh, of course, your, your, uh, uh, administrative, uh, infrastructure for accounting and there I include management in there. We have a strategy consulting team as well. That's a separate team. So there, there, are, there are a number of other, uh, functions in there. And where's, where's headquarters? Where are most people based? So, so technically speaking, headquarters is in London. It's a UK-based company. And that's where the holding company is based. Um, I work out of New York and Connecticut, as does the CTO and the CFO. Um, and so I guess you would call New York the informal headquarters. John, how the hell do you get excited? I got to start his own company. How the hell do you keep your excitement level up when you're working for basically the man? I mean, you're, you're, you're part of a holding company. I just, I'm curious how you manage your emotions there. Well, it's our holding company. Okay. Um, so- so not one of the holding companies. Well, I thought you said TA. I thought you said it was TA. Uh, TA is the uh, – yes, TA is our investor. And then uh, Flash Talking's corporate structure has a holding company that owns the various country entries en- entities. So there's a Flash Talking Australia, Flash Talking Germany, Flash Talking UK. Flash Talking is then incorporated as, as a bunch of entities. And we have a holding company based in the UK called Simplicity Marketing that houses all of the operating companies. I see. I see. The numbers you just gave me though on revenue figures, is that just yours or is that across all the – no, that's that's across all. Okay, got it. So, so well, TA though. I mean, do they own more than fifty percent of the company? Was the secondary larger than that? Yeah, they ha- they have a, a controlling interest. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's I guess my question. Right? I always I'm always curious why entrepreneurs like you that start something from scratch sell it, then for whatever reason maybe get more risk averse and say, oh, just I'm going to go do something a little safer, but it's bigger scale and have fun doing that. Well, I, I, I don't necessarily look at that. Well, I'm I'm not the guy who starts companies from scratch. I've I've done one of those. Um, in my career, this is my fourth ad tech company. Only one of them did I start from the beginning. Um, the others were uh, ones where other people had started and I came in as sort of the guy to take it to the next level. Um, and that's really been the case with Flash Talking. Um, the company, um, since in the three years, we've doubled in revenue since I've gotten here. Um, 
and I, that's the space that I like it, particularly at this point in my career at 54 years old. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm better suited to take something that has a foundation and then figure out, um, how to take that to the next level than going back to the days of being the chief cook and bottle washer and IT manager all wrapped up in one. We all know John misses the Red Bull and ramen late nights. He just doesn't want to admit it. All right. All right, John, let's, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, Getting Naked by uh, Patrick Lencioni. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Um, I love the work that my friend Scott Canole has done over at Integral Ad Science. Integral Ad Science? Yes. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building your business? Uh, I'm in LinkedIn all the time. Number four, how many hours of sleep are you getting every night? Um, I, I'm pretty consistent. I go to bed at 10 o'clock. I wake up at five. That's seven's really? pretty good. Seven's the number. You said you're 54. What's your situation? Married, single, do you have kiddos? Uh, I'm, I'm married. I have four boys. Oh, wow. Uh, my, old, my oldest is in the business. He's 23 and works for Deloitte. And then I have twins who are in college and uh, my youngest is 16 and still at home. That's great, John. Last question here. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, my 20-year-old self had no idea that I would ever do anything relating to math and analytics. I, if you would have told me at 20 years old that my career would be based on optimization and data, I would have said you were absolutely crazy. Um, so that, that's what I, I wish I had known sooner that this is where I was going to end I mean, up. Look into data earlier. Notice you have a love for that. Yes. Guys, I have it from John again, had success in his first company since then. The other three has all been kind of going into something that's already launched, optimizing, growing it. He's done that here at flash talking 2001. The company was launched. He joined call it two and a half, three years ago. The company has since uh, broke $70 million in revenue on call it 700, 800 million bucks in total ad spend processed, uh, bootstrap, which I love 320 folks based in, uh, all around the world. But London is home there with the holding company headquarters. TA owns a little bit more than half of it, but John's enjoying building something that's part of a bigger infrastructure. John, thank you so much for taking us to the top. All right. Thank you very much, Nathan. Good to talk to you.